Welcome to the 2018 Atari Awards and presented on Zero Page Homebrew. Um, hope everybody's doing well out there. We've got lots of awards to give away. They're sitting right over there. We've got 10 of them. This is Darcy. I'm Hi, James. I'm Darcy. He we're, is James. We're going to be presenting the awards. So Darcy's going to be with me for the first three awards. Then we're going to Lucky switch you. up to Erilyn. Then we're going to switch up to Tanya. And then we're all going to come back at the end for a big encore. Um, yeah, so I thought we'd have all the uh, all the hosts here today for uh, all the awards. You know, all the people you know and love. Um, and we're going to be talking with the people who win the awards. And we're going to also be talking with Al Russo of Atari Age. And we're going to be talking with Brian Mathern of uh, the Atari 2600 Homebrew Companion. We are all presenting the 2018 Atari Awards together as a group because we're more powerful that way. We're stronger together. Yeah. Everything good over there? And we've got Corey, who you can't see, <laughs> on the mixing board, on the video board. So if anything messes up, it's on him. No. Awesome. <laughs> Snakes. Um, yes, all dressed up, looking sharp. Lots of people have tuned in. Thank you very much for tuning in. Um, this has been in the making for like um, six months or so, where Brian Mather and I um, came together to get the idea together to put this on, because he's the keeper of the ultimate homebrew list, the 2600 homebrew list. And it has been invaluable on the show and also invaluable making this awards presentation. And we, uh, Brian and I, put together the list of every single game that came out in 2018. Whether it's a work in progress that's been released. 100% oh, of the games that were not hidden from view. Yes, exactly. And Brian's pretty diligent about it, actually, because, you know, games are posted in the Atari Age forums. They're posted in uh, Facebook in multiple groups, closed groups sometimes. So he scours the web every day looking for any new Atari 2600 games. I know it says Atari Awards, but this year it's just Atari 2600, so don't be misled. It's As opposed to Atari... Computer uh, systems? PC games or whatever. Um, 5200, 7800, XEGS. There's a bunch of different Atari yeah, systems. Yeah. This is just for the VCS slash 2600, so don't be misled if you come here accidentally. Then be Looking. gone. Be <laughs> no, gone. No, stay around, stay around, stay around. <laughs> stay around. Don't leave yet. Um, so we've got 10 awards to give out. Um, we're going to be talking with the awards winners. Uh, they'll be accepting them live, some of them video, some of them, I don't think only audio. No, video, pre-recorded, and also a read out speech as well from one person. So that's exciting. We'll be reading it out. Two? Uh, well, there's two speeches. Well, oh, we can't give it too much away. <gasps> Sorry. Oh I'm my sorry. God. It's Someone put over. a black bar across my mouth so I can stop talking. Uh, audio lag here. That's wonderful. <laughs> that's great. That makes me super happy. <laughs> um, maybe they have, oh, uh, sorry. Uh, you might have to live with it because uh, it'll be too difficult to fix it. How, how much lag is there? I'm going to clap my hands. You tell me. How many seconds? Um, and while we're waiting for that answer, because <laughs> everybody's about 20 seconds behind on the delay. Because <laughs> um, one to two seconds? Oh, can you live with it, guys? Is it okay? Not 0.9 seconds? Two to three seconds? Oh, that's pretty annoying. Um, eh, about two seconds. So what do you think? Can we continue on like that or should I fix it? Fix it? One you vote can. for Sarah? Fix? You can. I don't know. It depends how long it takes. It you know doesn't it take long. Do it right now. It, it would just, it would be one setting. Um, it's like a badly dubbed movie. Okay. Yeah, do it right yeah, now. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Um, Darcy can entertain you. <laughs> Uh, what can we do next? Uh, I'll play uh, mouth noises. <laughs> oh, I don't know how to do that. Well, and it's going to be out of sync mouth noises is the problem. <laughs> <laughs> that makes it even better. It's time, to, it's time to pull out your miming skills, Darcy. I can tell a joke. <laughs> okay, back to your spot. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I was just about to tell you the okay. best joke ever. Let me know if that fixed it. Um, 
That might have fixed it. It worked. Oh, good. Dude, I'm I need one more <laughs> other than ground trooper saying it worked. <laughs> Much better. On sync. Yes. Woo! It was that it's a bug in OBS. Anyway. I'm not going to get into it. Because 99% of you don't care about bugs in OBS broadcast software. <laughs> How's the audio levels? Good. They're looking good. Okay. So, uh, what is this award show? This is the award show for all the 2600 games that were released in 2018, January 1st to December 31st. No exceptions. No, no, there is no exceptions. No exceptions. There were some games put out on January 1st, 2019, and they were not eligible. But they will be eligible for, for 2019. That's right. So hang on to your hats. It's like those, and your games. It's like those movies that are put out in January of 2000, like the beginning of the year for the Oscars, which is tomorrow. Totally coincidental, by the way. And you go, was that this year? That seems like so long ago that yeah. movie came out. Yeah, that happens. Yeah. And, and you're like, no, it did. It came out in January. So some of Or those... they came out in December 31st, and you're like, how can that be in the Oscars? It <laughs> okay. just came out. Like, yeah, yesterday. but... Just like here, the Oscars, you know, we're doing this in February and the Oscars are in February. So there's time. There's, I think there should be law. A law <laughs> that says any award shows have to take place January 1st. Everybody oh, has God. the day off. Do you know how much all... trouble that is? You have to make get the awards, tabulate. It's impossible. Just do it. You have like... Enough excuses, sir. Eight, eight hours. Eight hours to, <laughs> you to count prepare all prepare ahead of time. That's true. Yeah. No. <laughs> we, just need, we just need 500 Jameses. That's yeah. right. Yes. <laughs> we need to clone them. They're all in one room. Yeah. So the, we have 10 awards. The awards are, I'm going to have to flip over. Can I use your sheet for a second? Uh, best uh, Work in Progress Homebrew. Uh, best Demo. Keep that out of view. Um, <laughs> best I pack, anything away. Best Packaging. <laughs> uh, best Game Hack. See, it says... Darcy gets best packaging? No, you're just here for the best <laughs> packaging. Right, okay, okay. Um, well, if they don't claim it, you, maybe you can That's have right, it. yeah. Uh, best programming. Uh, best uh, technical achievement award. And we'll get into details of what these actually are when we get to them. Uh, best music and sound. Uh, best graphics. Best Batari basic homebrew. And best homebrew overall. So there is, there is a method to the madness of this order. Um... I think that's that's good. You want to get into the awards? Let's, that's what people let's are get here into for. It for the awards. And yeah. we can we can blab on about other things in between the awards, but let's get to the first one, which is a best a work in progress. And uh, you ready? Here are the nominees: best work in progress homebrew. homebrew. The other one. The other one. The other one. Toledo Giertes. Amoeba Jump by Dion Olsthum. Blackjack Theta 8 by Edward Gilmore. Chaotic Grill by Splendid Nut. Daredevil by Lewis Hill. Dragon's Descent by Revan Tooley. Pac Man 2600 8K by Dintar 816. Rail Slider by Lilla Pujenkin Pound. Robo Ninja Climb by Nathan Tolbert.
Robo Mechanic by Christoph Kluxek. Best Work in Progress Homebrew. Aardvark by Oscar Toledo Giertes. Amoeba Jump by Dion Sorry, people, we have Olsen. to start it over, uh, but, uh, so you have to watch this again. <laughs> Blackjack Theta 8 by Edward Gilmore. Chaotic Grill by Splendid Nut. Daredevil by Lewis Hill. Dragon's Descent by Revan Tooley. Man 2608K by Dintar 816. Rail Slider by Lila Pujenkin Pound. Robo Ninja Climb by Nathan Tolbear. Robo Mechanic by Christoph Kluxek. Spies in the Night 2 by Jared Gray West. Wizard of War Arcade by John Shampo, Mike Haas, and Nathan Strong. We have to go to Skype, actually. One second. Okay, transition. And the miracles of technology. There we go. Let's squish over a bit more. And if you could X that uh, one there. This one here. Yep. And click on his over there. Not there. Down oh. here. Okay. And I think that should make him live. Oh, good. We're moving. Oscar, can you hear us? See, uh, I, yes, I can hear you. <laughs> that kind of gives away. But anyway, um, we'll get better at this. So the best, the best work in progress homebrew. Um, in third place, uh, Pac-Man 2600. Uh, 8K by Dintari 816. In second place, Wizard of War Arcade by John Champeau. Uh, Mike Hass and Nathan Strum. And the winner is... Drum roll, because <laughs> we already gave it away. Um, uh, Aardvark by Oscar Toledo Gutierrez, aka Nano Chess. Uh, Thomas Jentz for coding and Nathan Strum for graphics. And uh, so let's switch to back to the Skype now, because I messed up and I told you the wrong thing to switch to Skype before Ooh. we announced it. Hooray! Welcome, Oscar. Can Thank you hear you. us? Thank you. Are you able to hear us? Um, well, uh, well. I can hear you. I'm pretty excited, Excellent. excited for this. Um, 
uh, this game called all the cape done with a tomat, this game, Nathan, the graphics, uh, with my team, and thanks to Alberto for uh, helping us be a, a team, and yeah, I'm pretty happy for you. Well, thank you very much. It was very hard to hear you, but uh, hopefully everyone out there uh, heard him. Did everybody uh, hear Oscar out there? We're still making sure everything's good. I'll just, should I try to hand it to him through the <laughs> webcam? Yes, push yes. it through the webcam to him. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> so, there we go. Right? So for everybody, oh, we heard him, but there's echo. Uh, I don't know if we can do anything about that. Actually, go... Corey, go to the nominees video just for a second. Okay. Oh, no, don't do that. Um, let me mm, go to, damn it. I don't know how to fix it. Never mind. <laughs> Might have to live with the uh, echo. Actually, it's probably so through our mics. Up, it's probably through our mics, actually. No, keep them on there. So, Oscar, right. we're going to send you the award. Um, do you have the award again? We'll show Power everybody out there. Too. Go right to the wide shot camera, the other one. There you go. And it's blurry, but that's okay. Don't digest it. And we'll uh, be sending you also the, uh, the envelope as well, and also a certificate um, saying that because your name is not on the award um, because we had to order them a long time beforehand. So congratulations, Oscar. On, on your win for best work in progress. And this actually was a very, uh, heated uh category, category yeah. yeah because there was a lot of really amazing entries yep. this year so next 2019's best homebrew is going to be really a lot of competition a lot of competition it's going to be really really heated so um so congratulations oscar on that um oh it's the speakers Thank you. possibly Thank you. oh I, i'll turn theirs down anyway Technology is wonderful. <laughs> We're working it out. It's going to be amazing by the end. <laughs> yeah, it's just buttery smooth by the end. Um, yeah, so it was it was a lot of uh, a lot of good games this year. So 2019 is looking really good for 2600 Atari 2600 Homebrew. Um, so what do we have next? Oh, um, so. Thanks for thanks, Oscar, for making the game, and uh, we, I'll get in touch with you afterwards and send that out to you and get your address. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Congratulations. Congratulations. And you can. Get that. Oh, transition. We transitioned back. There we go. We'll get it. There we go. Um, so. Um, for people who don't know you, what's your experience with 2600 games? Did you play 2600 um, when you were a kid? Or I, I, know I, you didn't played, have I did play some uh, Shorty, my neighbor next door. <laughs> yeah, Shorty. Uh, he had His a few name. video game systems, and one of them was the Atari, and that's where I played uh, most of my Atari video games. Oh, uh, okay. I think that was the same experience for me. I didn't have one growing up. My first computer slash console because i kind of consider a console as a commodore 64 and i you know you had one yeah but i played it on people's at people's houses like played in television and coleco yeah same like, that was the same thing same house yeah. he had all the consoles i had none of them yeah it was a uh, imbalance of video games between the two houses but luckily it was right next door and uh, my friend so yeah my friend was across the street and he hasn't had an in-television i think i um like relatives who had an Atari 2600. So when I visited my grandma in Calgary, I would always borrow it for the summer or for the couple of weeks that I was there. And I just went hard on it. I think <laughs> Phoenix and asteroids I had. Yeah. So it's uh, kind of fun presenting this awards to all the new games that are coming out. Yeah, it's pretty great. I mean, I remember specifically when I was moving here, yeah. stopping somewhere in some mountain range in British Columbia yeah <laughs> and visiting some people like my my parents friends and and they had an Atari yeah. and someone was playing 
it was adventure is that the yep yeah. that's the one where you move around and collect keys and, and you're, dragons you're not, you know yep, and, and i remember i just i didn't get it i was like what <laughs> And uh, with the games that are coming out, like all the games that have come out, all the homebrew, this, yeah, this, like I never look at the game and think I don't get it. Like the they, new ones, yeah. they, they just blow me away over and over again. Just how uh, incredible they are! Like they're I just think, so I much more people, sophisticated. I think you know? people like the language of video games has evolved mm, over that time yeah. from the beginning, and, and actually, people understand video games when they're playing them too. Yeah. Um, you know, back then you had to go and press the reset switch on the console, but now the modern games have menus, they have intro screens, yeah. you can select things on the menu, press the button to start the game. I think just the language of people making the game is just more advanced and it's just a lot more user friendly. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and it's, it's really great seeing all the games that have been ported now yeah. from arcade games that never made it onto console. Like, you know, all, all the games this year that are uh, and coming out next year as well. You'll see them as we go through them. All these amazing ports of games that nobody got to experience. So they're kind of, we're all just reliving our childhood and, and, and uh, <laughs> kind of getting <laughs> what we wanted back then now. Yeah. Right? It's like, we have the power and the money to do it now. You <laughs> withheld it, world. Yes. <laughs> Damn it. Um, no longer. So let's, let's go on to the next, uh, next award which is um, best demo. And these are, actually we didn't explain which best work in progress homebrew. Let's rewind a bit. Um, the first category, best work in progress homebrew is our games that are not done yet, not said that are final, that aren't released say on a cartridge or a binary. It's like most promising. Yeah, most promising. What's yeah. coming up? What's, coming What's up? gonna yeah. happen? So they haven't said they're done yet. They're still working on it. They're still coming out. Um, so that's, we wanted to honor that and kind of give a, almost a preview of what's coming out. Cause we do that. We play them on the show Yeah. and we play each iteration, especially when they have a big bump up yeah. of quality, uh, or not quality, but in terms of what they've added to Features it. And, yeah. yeah. And then when they're done, we play the final version on the show, which is fun. So that's, that's what best work in progress is. Um, the next one's best demo. And this is kind of a departure because we never really play demos on the show because they're not interactive. Like, yeah. It, like, uh, I, like maybe on the intro or so, I don't know. I recall seeing them. Maybe it was not even during the show that I saw them. I, I can't remember. may have that. played it. But yeah. Very rare anyways. Rare or never. <laughs> rare, yeah. It's rare to never we play these because they're not playing. They're not like we, we just sit there and go, yeah, it looks good. looks good. looks good. And on the show, we do interactive stuff. So these are, demos are non-interactive, almost, well, they're programs, but almost videos, music videos. There's the really high quality video uh, graphics, really high quality sound. And either there's a story or they push the limits of the system. It's like, how did they do that? Um, they do it a little bit because they have more time to do it because there's no joystick input to work with. There's no if if thens because it's it yeah. runs exactly the same yeah. every time. Yeah. But they blow they don't you have to away. Hold anything back? Yeah. No, they just go for it and they yeah. can make things go crazy. And so you'll see um, in these clips uh, for best demo how amazing these really look, and you're, you'll be blown away. And um, so let's get to it. Are you ready for best demo? The nominees, almost. Um, so we're going to take a look at the nominees for best demo. Best demo. Best demo. Acid Rain by Jeremiah and No One. Alpha Cox by Dentifrice. Compo Filler by Goblinish. Dengue Fever by Digital Sound Systems and Flush.
Hard 2632 by Imp and Svali. Lapin Kulta by Dentifreeze. M by Flush. Mushroom Adventure by Subtori. Stella Atois by Flush. Three Minus by Altair. Early this time. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> so for best demo, hopefully not. <laughs> So we actually have a three-way tie for second place. So there is no third place. Um, so the three-way tie is Acid Rain by Jeremiah and No One, Hard 2632 by Imp and Zvali, M by Flush, and the winner is Alpha Cux by Dentifreeze. And so let's, let's take a look at the award. So congratulations. Oh. Um, we couldn't get in contact with anybody from Dentifreeze. It's a collection of people. So we'll be getting in contact with them afterwards and, uh, and sending it <laughs> off to them. Um, so congratulations. Um, these were always amazing demos. A warm award. <laughs> Is it warm? Is it you warmed it up? Oh. With my <laughs> bottom. <laughs> with your bottom. So we're going to give a call to uh, Al Yuruso from Atari Age right now. And uh, because he is, thank you, subtle handing of the phone. <laughs> um, he is one of the uh, co-sponsors of, oh, of this award show. And uh, he helped quite a bit um, because he hosts, he hosts the uh, Atari Age forums where all the voting took place. And thank you so much for everybody for voting. So we're going to give a phone call to him and not reveal his phone number. So hopefully you're ready. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> I like to qualify No DTMF things. tones for you hackers. Hopefully everyone can hear that. Hello. Hello, Al. Oh. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, I can totally hear you. Hopefully everyone else can hear you as well. Um, so how are you doing today? Sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're probably not even aware we were phoning you until behind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is time for my joke? Yeah, it's time for your big joke, Darcy. No. Maybe. <laughs> Oh, no, we didn't ask you anything. We're just wasting time. <laughs> so, uh, so I just wanted to thank you, actually, for uh, helping us with um, the Atari Awards by, you know, hosting the voting in the forums and um, promoting it as well. And, of course, doing everything that you do for the Atari 2600 community by, you know, the forums again and putting out the games and supporting all the... Uh, developers in, uh, you know, just spreading the word. I mean, I, I appreciate that, but really have to give a hand to all the people who are involved in actually making the game, the, the programmers, designers, people doing artwork, uh, people designing manuals, boxes, labels, 
uh, you know, and pixel art for the games, and then people generating, you know, sound effects and creating music. And I mean, there's so many people involved. Sometimes it's just one person, which is, you know, fun in the 20th century because one person can create a game probably themselves. Uh, other times, you know, it's much larger, larger efforts, such as what you're seeing with Artbark and with Mappy and, and titles like that. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it's the whole community, and, you know, plus people testing games, because a lot of the authors post binaries, and that just helps people further improve the game during the development. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I feel honored to actually be involved with, a lot, you know, a lot of these games where I get to, to help bring them out in physical form, uh, you know, just like Atari and all these other companies did back in the day. And, and with the advance in printing technology over the last couple of decades, you know, we're able to actually do that and rival or see the quality of those games, you know, those these physical materials, you know, that were printed back then. So it's nice to be able to do that. Uh, yeah. And then you guys have done a tremendous job, you know, setting up these awards as well. Oh, thank you. Uh, you know, we did something. We did something similar a long time ago with that. That's uh, great. It's nice to see someone finally pick up that baton and, and move with it, and you know, and, and give acknowledgement to all these great titles that are, you know, we we still have four years after the 2600 initially came out. I mean, it's pretty remarkable to have a community that big uh, so long after you know these systems stopped being sold. Yeah, it's and that's why we're doing the award show, and that's why I do zero page homebrew is to really honor all the work that everybody does, and and I I love the support in the community, and they they send me you know pre previews of their games that aren't even out yet, and I mean we're also very humble in the community. We're always thanking everybody else, <laughs> and it and it but it is true. Ev yeah. it, everybody makes up um, this community. Everybody puts in their their little their parts. To, to get these games out and you know we're t we're not getting rich off of this stuff <laughs> not making any money most of us um, it's all for the fun and and it's for the people to enjoy these games at the end of the day um, yeah it's Stan, Stan's Re Stan Awards that's that's what it was I think it was in the early 2000s right I'm sorry Oh, the Stan, the original early. award show, the Stan Awards. I think it was in the early 2000, oh, like yeah. 2004, 2005. Yeah, that, was, that was 15 years ago at this point. Yeah. Yeah, so it's time, time to bring it back. Time to pass. <laughs> <laughs> time to time to uh, honor the new games now. Agreed. Yep. Yeah. I know all those games over the years missed getting awards. <laughs> That's we can right. do retro ones. <laughs> That's right. We'll have to do like a fill in uh, all the games uh, right. from 2005 to 2017. <laughs> we'll have to do that oh next year. That yeah. sounds like a massive undertaking, though. <laughs> that's a, yeah, that's 120 if awards. Yeah, if it wasn't bad enough for this one, I know. Yeah, yeah. Too many awards. Um, people can honor them by downloading and playing them. <laughs> that's right. Absolutely. And, so, I mean, I'm sure I, you know, the authors absolutely you know, love hearing people playing their games, getting feedback. Uh, and you know the high score contest, and yes. just, you know everything where people get to enjoy these games that were never released, either original games or as you mentioned ports. Yeah, uh, and just it's really incredible to see what people are able to do on the hardware. Not only that we're getting new games, but the the quality of the game is just remarkable. Yeah, uh, you know if if some of these people were around. 40 years ago, working for Atari or Activision, I mean, they could have made it big back oh, then. They'd be millionaires. So. Yeah. I know. I, I need a time machine where I can take all these games with me. <laughs> That's a big old box of them. Technology. Yeah. Like, if I could also bring some of the technology back, like the, the melody boards and stuff like that. Yeah, you would have to bring uh, that back, or there'd be a, a limited number of the games. <laughs> I recommend, if you're going back in time, to bring a list of uh, lottery numbers as well. Yes. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, now you're now you're just making it easy on me. <laughs> That's too easy. Yep. So, and my phone number. Yeah. They call yeah. me back then and give me some of those oh, uh, yeah. numbers. That's right. Share, <laughs> share the wealth. Yeah. That's right. So, Not so, to mention buying all those rare games that were being dumped in store shelves for a dollar. Yeah. You know, oh. Yeah. yeah, buy a few cases of those. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it depends how much depends how much room you have in your time machine, I guess. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah, mm. it might be limited. If it's a TARDIS, it'll be fine. Um, but uh, if it's just a normal phone booth, like Bill and Ted, it, it might not have enough room, yeah. Sm send your uh, youngest child. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so there's more room for things in the in the booth. <laughs> but again, it's, it's really remarkable, you know, just to have to congratulate everyone who's been involved in, in producing new games, 
Yep. And uh, congratulations to, to all the winners. It's definitely a tough field in all these different categories as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, a lot, lot of great games. And, it's amazing. Yep. And, and there's, always, you know, there's always more games coming out. Oh, my God. And, again, you've given us with your work in progress in all those games that are involved in that. Uh, you know, it just heightens awareness of all these games coming out, too, which is great for these projects. Oh, yeah, like uh, all so, that full list of work in progress. I, I Probably most of them will be out in some form during 2019, maybe, or, or t- maybe 2020 at the latest. So there's, it's a very uh, promising future for Atari absolutely. 2600 yep. Homebrew, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so thank you very much, Al. For everything oh, and your you. support of the 2018 Atari Awards. Thank you very much, and thanks again for all the work that you guys. I mean, while I'm hosting it and all, and help promote it a little bit, you guys have absolutely done, you know, the lion's share of the work in making this happen. So thank you very much for that. Oh, thank you so much, Al. So we'll talk with you later. All right, take care, and I'll continue watching. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Bye bye. So that worked okay. <laughs> Yay, the phone Success. worked. Success! Success something. <laughs> I'll flip my script back over here. Yes, I have a schedule in front of me. Yeah. Sorry, I'm out of focus for a second. Okay. okay, we're going to move on to the next category, which is best packaging. Now, what best packaging is, is everything but the game. Now, these are for, uh, like, say, the box, um, the artwork on the cartridge itself. Mm-hmm. Manual. Some some games include maps like or... maps, um, big fold-up posters. Um, some include like alien toys. <laughs> yeah, awesome little <laughs> alien toys, little, yeah. little add-ons that really kind of enhance. Like I remember Spies in the Night, which was 2017, um, had spy glasses that ah, came with it, yeah. and like a fake million-dollar bill and stuff <laughs> like that. And it just really adds to the atmosphere. Uh, when you buy a game, and and it kind of goes back to when you got stuff with games. Like you buy a game, even if you buy a game in a in a like a, a clamshell. Yeah, um, yeah. What you open it up and you get a disc that has a code on it. <laughs> it's not even a disc, actually. Forget that. Let's go even further. Sometimes you buy a game in the store. And you take it home, you open it up, and there's a download code. Yeah. What? Why are you even buying this disc? <laughs> Is it just to put on your shelf, I guess? Yeah. There's no manual at all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just a download code. Sometimes you get the disc now, but there's still like how to put the disc in your drive. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, you know, I can kind of understand. Well, not. I can't. They're trying to reduce costs and make more money. I think. And I miss those. I miss that kind of stuff when you we buy a stuff, game, yeah. especially the maps. I remember buying Ultima. Ultima. I have it on my shelf at home, Ultima 3. Yeah, and you yeah. got the cloth a, map. A cloth Very exciting. Map. Yeah. And that was, like, amazing. It's like you were transported to that world as if you had a real map. And, and that map was one of the, like, possibly the reason I was motivated to buy a copy of the game like to get that map that was it was awesome yeah and it's it's so fun buying these games opening because it, them up and seeing what's in them yeah 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 it was very exciting yeah yeah and i remember uh like the games used to come with manuals oh, and at a certain point thick. the manuals were big and heavy and you'd pick up the box <laughs> and it was weighty from the the weight of the manual yeah and then three and a three and a half inch floppies i don't and, know what year it was shape. but it was but i remember the year where like they stopped having manuals and it was just like pdf or like you know like yeah. document files instead right it was on the disc yeah it was but the price didn't internet. go down no it never went down <laughs> prices never went down the price did not go down they just, they just skipped on it a bit yeah. yeah um so we're gonna go to sorry <laughs> so you're switching over there you went to a close shot so we're gonna go to um the uh nominees for best packaging Best packaging. Best packaging. Alien Greed 5. Packaging by Yandman. Astronomer. Packaging by Alex Petro.
Balloon Trip. Packaging by Vladimir Zuniga. Bouncer, Boing Hack. Packaging by Scott Dayton. Dungeon 2 Solstice. Packaging by David Dries. Ketchup Kaboom. Kaboom Hack. Packaging by Corey Kramer. Mappy. Packaging by Nathan Strum. Play. Packaging by Fair Jano Zoltan. Hubert Jump, Amoeba Jump Hack, Packaging by Scott Dayton. Santa Brothers, Mario Brothers Hack, Packaging by Joe Klander. Space Game. Packaging by Maggie Vogel. Tire Tracks. Packaging by Atari Boy 2600. Zombie Roadkill. Packaging by D.C. Stolfner. Allowing for my... And we're back! Actually, turn it on after, because you can hear that. Anyway, uh, best packaging. And in third place, Zombie Roadkill by Jason Santucci. Uh, packaging by DC Stelfner. Oh yeah, I have to read these names again. <laughs> Try and figure out how to say them. Um, and I'm gonna get this wrong. That's why you wear so many layers, so you hide the, uh, did I get the name right sweats. That's right, I'll mumble through it. <laughs> uh, dun and in second place, Dungeon 2, Solstice, by David Weevil. Packaging by David Dries. It's probably Dries. I, I know there's a debate about this. Um, and the winner is Mappy by John Champeau, packaging by Nathan Strum. Ta da And uh, Nathan Strum actually sent in a written um, acceptance, acceptance speech. Um, so this is what Nathan Strum says. Um, this is very cool. There are a lot of incredibly talented artists who contribute to Atari Age homebrews. And there were a lot of really strong and creative nominees this year. I actually didn't re read this out beforehand, so he could say anything. So I feel very <laughs> lucky to have won Best Packaging. I'm really grateful that people enjoyed the work that I was able to create for Mappy. And I had a lot of fun working on it. Especially because it allowed me to really dive back into my first love, cartooning. Uh, I'd like to thank John Champo for creating an amazing game and asking me to be part of it. Albert Russo for taking care of... Uh, to taking care to have the work printed at the highest quality and for putting up with how late I was getting it finished. And to Dave Dries for being a great sounding board for, uh, for feed, sounding board for feedback. And also for starting the Champ Games comic books with his uh, incredible work on Scramble. Oh yeah, there was a comic included with Mappy, that's right. Also a huge thank you to everyone who supports the homebrew scene by buying physical copies of the games. Even though there isn't any real money to be made, it's gratifying knowing people care enough about the games to want to own them. 
and it makes the effort we put into them worthwhile. Finally, thanks to Zero Page Homebrew! Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Atari Age and Atari Homebrew Companion for creating the Atari Awards and providing a way to recognize the many people who contribute to our hobby. Well said, Nathan. Thank you very much. And uh, there is your award. We're going to put it to the side for safekeeping. And we're going to um, switch out now, I think. Yeah. Yes. It's time to hand off. Darcy's going to go on the camera. <laughs> Erilyn's tapping in. <laughs> All right. Um, so we're going to... Oh, so much shorter. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we're almost even here. So I it's have not going to be so much headroom on me and <laughs> oh, man. Darcy's head cut off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They talk about me when I'm gone, too. Oh, Dr. Clue loves the backdrop. Thank you very much. Yeah, and hello to like all it... the people that are here. It's insane. Yeah, I, I, it's so I can't, many. We can't even read them all because there's a lot of people. But so many. Yeah, I w wish we could, but yeah. it's, it, will, it will go on forever. But thank you all for showing up to the chat, and it means a lot. And we're reading all the stuff that you're saying, and thank we you. Right we just, in front of us. We just have to blow through the show because we have too much <laughs> stuff to get through. But thank stuff. you all for being here. And somebody mentioned patches, too, which is a really good uh, point because um, back... In the 80s, Activision had patches that you would get um, when you got a certain score. And Corey over there yeah. <laughs> has earned his Frostbite patch, but he hasn't bought it yet because that's actually a really expensive patch. It's like $125 to $150, but you really earned it, so you should get it eventually. Wow. <laughs> you have a birthday coming up or Christmas? I do. <laughs> he does. I might just take a picture of it and make a poster. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> picture of it, put it up there. Um, yeah, so the patches, yeah, it's really cool that you can earn patches and Tire Tracks is going to get a patch soon. I earned my Cactus Patch, which is kind of a funny name. Yeah, um, mm. yeah um, I beat the game and I think the only way to get it is you beat the game because you get a big bonus at the end. Um, and I tried to work on another patch but failed. What was the patch? Do you remember, Tanya, we were trying to get a patch? I can't remember what it was, but I just, oh, it was Astronomer. Who was doing that with me? It was I, me. I, was it you? Did I you wasn't see? doing Astronomer. I, I mean, failed. I got to 11 and you have to get a 20. It's hard, hard, hard. Well, That's a, a hard it's one. It's just amazing that you can do things like patches and this integration of just like, it, you're not, it's, it's not just the game. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like you have all these other aspects that you can like interact with, which is yeah. insane. There's the patches. There's like high score competitions right. that we participate in as well. Um, there's just playing them too, yeah. just for fun on the show and seeing how far you can get. Um, it's just and trying just to super beat fun. James. Yeah, try. <laughs> no, you're good at you. We, we have we our niches. Have, we all have our strengths. Tanya's puzzles. That's right. Yours are mazes and RP dark, dark places and RPGs. RPGs. Yeah. And Dark's just great overall on everything. <laughs> he owns good. a store. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for games, so you'd hope yeah. so. It's a board game store, so, so good strategy. At feeling, strategy. So good at feeling the empathy of other people doing well at games. <laughs> That's oh, right. I, I do it myself. Wow. Yeah. That's right. Um, so the next uh, award is for best game hack. And there wow. were a lot of game hacks. And I think this has a lot of uh, nominees. Um, and what a... Did we? Yeah, we explained best packaging. I didn't miss that one. So what a game hack is, is when somebody takes an existing game and alters it in some way and releases it again. Say they alter the graphics, um, they alter the music or sound, um, they alter the way it plays maybe, because there were some uh, games that were recently released by Atari Age they were in the arcade, they had a rollerball. But when they were released in the 80s for the Atari 2600, you had to use a joystick. And that was terrible because you had to slowly move over here, slowly at a constant rate move over there. But um, there are some great hackers that made them work with the rollerball. And they're so much better. And you can boom, 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 move all over the place, especially like Missile Command. It's perfect for that. And because you... It's precision, right? Um, but uh, so a lot of people hack uh, the graphics in the game to kind of make it into another game. And that's a fairly simple hack to just do the graphics because you have to identify where the graphics are. Sometimes it's more complicated if you want to change the colors or maybe change the height of the character. But that's the biggest hack. Um, some of the more complicated ones are the way the game plays itself. 
and maybe like say Pac-Man, uh, not, not the way it plays, but Pac-Man for, um, the graphics, like the background, they released it with like a blue background. Yeah, we played the original like... one, they just made it black and it's like hundred percent improvement there or change the maze. Sometimes mazes are the, are a big one for hacks. So if you want to make Pac-Man better, you can change the maze a little bit. Sorry. Cut you off. Oh, no, I was just going to say, I just remember playing the Pac-Man like, show where we played something like eight or nine or ten oh, different Pac-Man games. Oh, the big Pac-Man Pac show, Which yes. was like the Pac-Man fest. Extravaganza. And the yeah. Yeah, that was a lot, <laughs> a lot of Pac-Mans. Um, so let's get into the nominees for Best Game Hack. Oh. Best Game Hack. Best Game Hack. Active Shooter Turmoil Hack by James Catalano. Alf, Taz Hack, by Scott Dayton and James Catalano. Batman, Popeye Hack, by James Catalano. Berserk Neo Version 2 Berserk Hack by Scott Dayton Broadside Combat Hack by Claudio Salvucci Dawn of the Dead, Worm War 1 Hack, by Scott Dayton. Extinction, Demon Attack Hack, by Scott Dayton. Ketchup Kaboom, Kaboom Hack, by Scott Dayton. Minor 2049er Faster, Minor 2049er Hack, by Thomas Yentz, Omega Matrix, and Dr. Clue. Misadventure, Adventure Hack, by Alan W. Smith. Moon Patrol Arcade DC Version, Moon Patrol Plus Hack, by Dr. Clue. Hubert Jump, Amoeba Jump Hack, by Scott Dayton. Santa Hero E.T., Hero Hack, by Scott Dayton. Stargate Desert Raid, River Raid Hack, by Dev KK and Whip. Stranger Things, Barb's Revenge, Dig Dug Hack, by Keeps. UFO Galaxian, Galaxian Hack, by James Catalano.
There okay, we we're back. <laughs> and, we're, um, and we're back. I get to do the honor of uh, announcing the best game hacks. Yeah. So, we shall go through. In third place, we have Misadventure, which is an adventure hack by Alan W. Smith. And in second place, building some tension, we have Moon Patrol Arcade DC version, which is Moon Patrol hack, and that's by Dr. Clue. And... First place goes to Minor 2049 Faster, which is a Minor 2049 hack by Thomas Yench, Speed Up Hack, Omega Matrix, Reset Bug, and Doc Taklu Sprite Dr. Hack. Clue. Dr. Dr. Clue. Dr. Clue. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so congratulations to... Um, yes. And the person who's going to be accepting it is uh, Dr. Clue, actually. And he's... Oh, here's the award for you. Um, and uh, he sent in a uh, pre-recorded video um, of him accepting the award. So we have a, a whole variety of different things. Um, so let's give that a go. And you might, when you switch over, it, yeah, it'll work. It'll work. Um, but we'll, you'll have to mute us. Okay, are you ready? Yep. Here is Dr. <laughs> Clue accepting the award. This is Bunny Bob in the year 2049, hot on the trail of Yukon Yuan. All is going well, and I have the following people to thank for it. First off, Big Five Software, for making me. Then, Tiger Vision, for making the 2600 mines that you see behind me. It's been quite an adventure. However, there's been some improvements since that time, and things are going even well since that time. So, we have AJ and Omega Matrix, who found the reset fix back in 2011 at Rare ROM, that has been hacked into this hack as well. Then we have Thomas Jens, who sped me up and made me so I was a little less pokey, and it made the game a lot more fun. Thank you, Thomas. And then, that was in 2013, 2018, Dr. Clue made me look more like my cell from the Atari 800 mines. Thank you very much. This has been wonderful. For all of you who are big fans of myself, Bunny Bob, I thank you. Thank you for your votes. And I will continue to see if I can find Yukon Johan and wrap up this caper once and for all. I salute you. Sending that in. He is in the chat right now. So congratulations on your best hack. Um, so Erlen. Yes, sir. You're kind of in a unique position when you came on the show on Zero Page Homebrew because you're a couple years younger. Than yeah, the, a few years. Of, a couple of more. Of us. <laughs> So, I'm the millennial representative of, of Zero right. Page Homebrew. I embrace that title. So you actually had never played that's Not a point. single one. I mean, I played games that were, I guess, around that era yeah. on like computers with my dad and whatnot, but they were all non nothing on the Atari. Like I never, I've never even seen like an Atari cartridge before. Yeah. Obviously, I know the concept of an Atari, but never touched it or anything like that. Yeah, so you'd heard of it. So, th so every game we play is a new experience for you. And, and our, our, is our, did you unmute us? Yes. Okay, good. I'm just checking because <laughs> I can't moment. see it. I'm solely panicked. Usually, I'm on the control board. I'm, I'm like ah. You must click. Um, so every game you play is a unique new experience. Um, how did you like find it playing these somewhat primitive games compared to like first person shooters with like real life graphics and I think that for me the the big thing about the Atari games that were fun is a lot of the games I've played are these really big like very long wandering games which have almost no challenge you feel like you just hang out and like things like <laughs> Skyrim and I play yeah. Path of Exile and I used to play Diablo all the time and I love grinding for gear and whatnot but the thing is, is you just kind of just sit in front of the computer and zone out versus Atari games are actually hard because they're <laughs> yes. shorter you can only compact so much so I think you I've never die. been I've never yeah. been challenged challenged before in a game in the same way as playing these oh, Atari games. Just it's true though. It's like we just this is coddled. Like, them. You know, yeah. we're coddled, but it's also like it's these games are getting so big that you just kind of like zone out and they become this yeah. like zombie like thing. And I love the fact that with like these games, there's some of them they're possible to beat in one sitting. Yeah. Like The Witcher That's 3, true. I love that game, but I've never beaten it because it's impossible to <laughs> to play everything. Yeah. And I think all games these days seem to be like that. I mean, of course there's like little things here and there, but that was the biggest difference and also like the biggest part for me too was I'm such a workaholic that I don't yeah. hang out with people I don't so if, if you said to me Erlen come over and let's play some video games together uh, I probably would say no so since but, I've made it kind of into a job and a thing exactly. every Wednesday you're here to do it it's like I have to do it it's my duty to come That's on Wednesdays correct. and 
and be the co-host. And I've and there's days where I have felt like horrible and had terrible weeks, and I've shown up to sort of just and it's actually been this beautiful like antidote to like my like neuroses, where to just shut down, hang out, and play games with my friends for two hours. I think it's yeah. something we all should do a little bit more. And I don't have the permission because I can't give myself that. I feel like right. I have to hustle and work and constantly do stuff. So to me, the show has actually been like a mental health savior <laughs> in a it lot really of ways. It lifts me up too, like getting and give and it sets me aside some time as well like you were saying to just sit and play games because i was not playing these games before the show very much and i wanted to play them more yeah so i'm like no wednesdays at you know 11 uh we set aside and play it for two or three hours and we get to hang out with all these people in the awesome people in the yeah. chat we get feedback we get to ask them questions and they give us hints on how to play the games and it's it's really fun. And, and my heaven is seeing the games progress. Like, I love... My favorite oh. thing in the whole world has been there's a few instances where, like, we've said things about games yeah. just by kind of bullshitting. And then all of a sudden, like, it, I feel like a month later, the game, like, something I said changed. I, mean, I feel yes. like God for a moment. It's like I feel like I have <laughs> I this responsibility. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's obviously just suggestions, but it's one of the yeah. coolest things to see these games because I love, I love watching the evolution. And, like, even if it's something... Even if it's I didn't say anything... And yeah. the programmer went off and did their own thing. It's they just saw cool. you do something in totally. the game. Totally. Like, oh, he did this, and I've never seen somebody do this in the game, or he did it this way, or went way to the left, and that kind of did something weird. It's like, oh, I should change it. And it's yeah. it's really fun getting that actual, like, physical feedback from the show. It's, it's like a really fun experience yeah. that we have some influence on these games. Like... You, you'd never have influence on no. Witcher. We would never be able to influence it any way unless we were like in their inner circle and doing alpha testing and like being on their payroll, really. And like, I feel like even like when we were here, me and Darcy were joking about Star Wars and talking about, I think that's what you do. Like you love something and then yeah. you want to, you want to have more of it. You want to change it. You want it to evolve. And these games sometimes feel so fixed. It's like you just play the game and it's done. Yeah. And like that's the thing I love about Homebrew is that there is a kind of evolution and they have an ebb and flow and you can yeah. play a game once, like Amoeba Jump. I played yes. like so many versions of that game and got <laughs> yes. to watch him figure out making a better and better game. So And now it's brilliant. Oh, it's yeah. It's beautiful. It and was all I did on your games night. I just ate chips and played Amoeba Jump because I didn't know any other games. I was like, I can get a, I beat my high score on Amoeba Jump. That was my goal. That's I, the goal for the night. I had yeah. to like, you know, binge on chips. <laughs> So let's get on to the next category, um, which is best programming. Wow. Now this one is a, a fairly nebulous kind of um, category for most people, I think, unless you are a programmer for the game. Because when you break down a game, there is the graphics, there's the sound, there's um, you know the packaging, there's all these other categories that we're honoring. But best programming is at the core of the game. This is the person who actually you know types types out the code what something happens when you press the button how does this character react to you shooting them what is the overall it's like the director of the game yeah. like if you put it in film terms i like to think of it as it's james for the show i show yeah. up and do nothing i just it's... hang out and james is the one who actually <laughs> prepares the games and does all the work and makes sure everything's ready so it's... that you can just it's the person with the pl the overall plan of what is going to happen in the game itself. And then the it's mechanical. the director of it. Yeah, the mechanics behind it. Um, and everything else is, is prettying it up. You it's know, like, the graphics and the sound, they add to that to make the game. Another metaphor, it's like you open up the watch and there's all these gears underneath. Yes. The watchmaker needs to know how all those gears work. And Impaler26 says, it's the math behind the fun. Dude, that's the perfect that's way to do it. That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah, it's the math typer. Yes. So it, this we're going to be honoring the, the programmers because maybe that gets lost in the shuffle Absolutely. a lot. Because it's not a visual thing. It's it's gameplay. It's it's the core of the game. Yeah, and we see the result often, yeah. but these are the people who are working to you know refine themselves and make these things go. Yeah. So let's take a look at the nominees for best program. Best programming. Best programming. Apollyon by Fair Janice Zoltan. Balloon Trip by Blue Swimmer. Mm -hmm. 
Dungeon 2 Solstice by David Weevil. Fear of the Dark by Fairer Janice Zoltan. Gizzlewap and the Terrible Blizzard of Fern by Jeff Smith. Mappy by John Champeau and Thomas Yentz. Nexion 3D by Brock Keeley. Plague by Fair Jana Zoltan. Sheep It Up by Dr. Ludos. Stripes of Terror by Christoph Kluczek, Michael Zukowski, and Marius Gorski. Sword of Surter by Jeff Sturmer. Tire Tracks by Lewis Hill. Programming in third place, <laughs> Plague by Fair Janice Zoltan, aka Member Atarian. In second place, Dungeon 2 Solstice by David Weevil, aka S0C7. And the winner is Mappy by John Champeau <laughs> uh, of Champ Games. And also Thomas Jens helped him out as well. Well, I thought we'd say that. So, um, okay. Escape. One second. Yeah, I didn't stop displaying again. Uh, we can't see you just yet, but I will fix that. So we have John on um, video, but I'm gonna help Corey out here for a yeah, second. This, is, this was an insane game. This was probably this was the first game that I ever played on Zero Page Homebrew was Mappy, which was an interesting introduction to uh, the Atari Twenty Six Hundred Homebrew experience. And I had no idea how it worked. And James was literally breaking me down like every individual detail. And the first, I think it took me like four plays to realize you could open doors. So I was trying to just like find this maze through. It's a like, really incredible game. And I just huge congratulations to John. He feels like one of the titans. I've kind of gotten to know his name as well. So it's a pretty cool game. Okay, let's shift. Over there we there go. We okay, we're ready to talk to John. There we go. Welcome, John. <laughs> can you see me? I can see you and I can hear you. Can you hear us? Excellent. Yes, I can. Excellent. We are up 100% <laughs> this <going>. time. <laughs> so congratulations, John, on uh, winning for programming for Mappy. Um, Thank you very much. Yeah, you're very welcome. Audio. Hard, hard to manage that. And, and that the Atari 2600 is not only relevant, but, you know, has a strong following, yeah, and strong we even have award shows. Have award shows. So, <laughs> <laughs> Magically. Exactly. I don't know how we got here. So, 
anyway, so um, specifically about the, the programming, um, yeah. you know, I, I'm sure um, a lot of people know that uh, I made, uh, I'd taken a little bit of a break there for a while from uh, making 2,600 games. Uh, I'd made a Ladybug back in 2006 and took uh, about nine or 10 years off. That's a great game. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Um, and then um, right around 2015, uh, Daryl Spice, um, I'm sure we all know him from Draconian and Space Rocks and, and other great games that he's made, uh, introduced me to uh, uh, DPC uh, programming, DPC Plus programming, actually, which is just a way to extend uh, what the Atari could do. Um, very similar to while uh, back in the 80s, um, you know, the uh, programmers really pushed the limits by adding more ROM, more RAM, um, even the DPC chip that was invented by uh, uh, David Crane himself from Pitfall 2. So um, that really intrigued me and uh, really uh, inspired me to get back into programming. So with that, you know, we were able to make uh, games like uh, Scramble, um, Super Cobra Arcade, and then uh, eventually that turned into CDF um, development, um, which stands for Chris, Daryl, and Fred, for those who don't know, the three uh, masterminds behind the, uh, the uh, technology that, that really makes it possible to push you. 2600 to places where I don't think any of us would have ever dreamed of back in the 80s. So, so for that, you know, I definitely want to say thanks to, to Daryl and his team and uh, all the inspiration that, um, that he, he gave me to, to actually do this game. So um, I've been thinking about making Mappy for a long time, probably uh, 15, 16, 17 years, somewhere on that. Wow. Um, I have some crude um, screenshots of what I started back in 2001. I could never imagine at that day that um, what you know the final product what it would look like. So um, again, thanks to everyone involved, obviously Nathan and uh, and uh, um, and Mike and, and everyone else. Um, so for that, just want to say thank you, and uh, I'm glad everyone's enjoying the game. So thank you again. Yeah. Well, thank you for making yeah, that thank game. Thank you so much. It's it's such a, a standout, amazing game, and such a collaborative effort. Um, it's it's just a, a work of art. <laughs> In fact, truly, like uh, very few. Um, it's one of those games that really push the twenty six hundred to beyond the limits of anybody could thought possible with just the number of characters on the screen. And the smoothness of the gameplay and just everything about it is just top, top notch. And I mean, we've we've played it on the show so many times. It's it's just so much fun. I noticed that. Well, thank you very much, and thanks again to uh, to you guys for even uh, promoting the game and, and playing it and suggestions on how to make it better. So you know, uh, it was kind of a final push at the end there to get everything together. But uh, you know, I think uh, mm -hmm. what we ended up with is uh, pretty pretty good, and it shows that it's in. A, a testament to everyone's hard work so thank you again to everyone so oh and um and somebody's uh arena foot asks what what titles are coming from champ games and i know you, <laughs> you have a lot of plans a lot of plans yeah well we have a few things we're working on you know I'm just trying to basically just pulling it everything out, out of the bag that i've been collecting for like 15 years trying to trying to gauge the interest of what the community is really looking for um as far as new games trying to take uh champ games into a new direction but you know um ports of uh old games is kind of our forte so um, we, we have a yeah. plenty we have a pretty good list of those type of games that we're still going to be working on um, it's more of arcade um you saw that in the, in the, uh, the whip section the uh, working program on uh, progress uh um category um I posted a few uh screenshots of uh, zookeeper which we're hoping to have done yeah. as well it's, it just seems to be an endless list of games. So as long as uh, everyone still appreciates them and wants to play them, you know, we'll, we'll do our best to, to bring those to uh, to everyone. So. Yeah. Oh, I, I used supposed to once hockey and bowling specifically. <laughs> so maybe you want to set up a poll for all this. Yeah. Uh, John Champo Champ Games just announced a, a sports title um, series of games. And you gave a list of possible titles. And yep. maybe you, want, you should set up a poll. And see which which titles people want first. I bet it's going to be hockey. Yeah, I would think so. that that would be probably my vote first. Yeah. is is a hockey title. Yeah, I, I I've been working on hockey. Well, I shouldn't say working. On. I started it. I was like one of the first games I started way back when. So uh, uh, I've always um, had I had an affinity for sports games, and I think bringing a, a new generation of sports games to the twenty six hundred would be pretty cool. So 
Oh um, yeah, hockey would be uh, definitely the, probably the first one I would uh, try to finish and, uh, and and see what kind of reaction it gets and see if people would be up for you know bowling, baseball, football, any of those types of games. Yeah. So. And somebody brought up, uh, I think it came up naturally on the show the other day that synchronized swimming and i looked it up on the internet <laughs> and there's absolutely zero synchronized swimming games so you can corner the market yeah probably the 2600 zero. synchronized <laughs> swimming games uh, anyway so I'll, I'll probably leave that to the, uh, <laughs> the swimming crowd so <laughs> <laughs> yes so thanks thanks so much john absolutely and thank, thank you so much for making mappy you're welcome and thanks thanks everyone thanks again, thanks again. okay bye-bye Bye. Oh, that was great. So, yeah, just close that down. Or hang up. There you go. Um, so what is next? Oh, um, it's actually we're going to be talking with Arena Foot next. Whoa. Who is the other? Yes, yeah, this, this, actually, this is funny. It's the first time I've ever will be ever physically talked to Arena Foot. And I've been talking with him on the <laughs> Internet for like a year or more than oh, a yeah. year now. So it's going to be. Uh, it, it's going to be different. It's going to yeah. physically interacting with them. So let's grab the phone. Here you go. So are you ready, Arena Foot? He is. He's in the chat. He's Arena's ready. He's always yeah. got it. He's always gonna there. Give him a call right now. Oh, I need his phone number. Yeah, that's important. Yeah. Okay. La da da. <laughs> no, I won't say it out. It has numbers in it. I'll give you that one. Okay. I revealed it has numbers. Oh, God. Oh, we can shift The person you're dialing isn't taking any calls at the moment. Oh, that's so rude. Arena. Arena, but you're not taking calls right now. Maybe I misdialed it. Uh, nine. Yeah. No. Oh, I did misdial it. <laughs> it... You, that's good I didn't get some rando. Yeah, that's too bad. <laughs> that would have been like, that would have been the most epic <laughs> zero page moment. There we go. <laughs> He's, I'm here. I'm here, he says. Yeah, it's my fault. <laughs> Lol. Oh, here, you want to hold that up? Sure, man. So I don't cross over. Just watch the level and you can see how close you Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I'm here. Hey, Brian. Yeah. How are you doing? All right, and you, James? Oh, pretty good. How do you think the show's going? Is everything smoothed out a bit better since the little rocky start? Yes, it did. Okay, yeah. good, good, good. Um, so, you are one of the uh, co... Um, I always forget planners, co-producers of the, of the Atari uh, 2018 Atari Awards. And uh, maybe you want to give a little bit of a background into... Everything. How'd you get into Atari? How did you get this list going? All that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, well, I started a few years ago. It's, uh, back in 2013, I went to my first uh, Houston Arcade Expo. And I saw Albert and I saw the Atari Age booth there. And, of course, he had several of the home, homebrew games on demo. And I was like, well, I'd like to get all of these and download them and play. And I had already been a member of Atari Age since 2002, so I was still following it, but I just wasn't active in the forums. And all I know is there was no one central place on the Internet that actually had all the titles where you could go and look at a list and see what, what there was to choose from. You had to uh, go through form after page after page just trying to find the latest ROM download yeah. and so I figured okay well I came across um, the enormous homebrew thread that was done by Vida Bobby but it was already outdated it was 2007 and then I also saw Impaler 26's uh, Hacks and Homebrew ROM collection mm, yeah. uh, that was 2011 and so I figured okay well since uh, v Dub already had the title and the hyperlink. I was like, well, I'll just start a spreadsheet and add some more information to hyperlink everything, keep track of it, you know. Shared it with a few people online. They, they loved it. And somebody had told me that this was like the most comprehensive list on the internet. So, of course, I ran with it. And, <laughs> Good you know, name. Might as well go yeah. with it. Years 
later, it's over, I think, last count I saw, 33,000, 3,100 titles on, on that wow. list. Wow. So, uh, That's yeah, a lot of games. <laughs> So you, you put all the hacks, you put the works in progress, you put completed games, you put, I, do you put, yeah. you do put demos on there as well. So you've got like pretty much every game after the 2600 was discontinued. Correct. Yeah. Um, I mean, there are some like de uh, some demos and stuff that I haven't fully gone through. I mean, I, w I was spending every night after work uh, going through like every single page of the Atari Age forums and and pages of the the big Stella list back in the day before the the Atari Age forums even was created and just sifting through page after page just trying to find ROMs and and where the newest one was and hyperlink it and then then uh, trying to find out, well, okay, has this title been published on a cartridge or not? So when you go to my mm. list, if the title is in bold print, that means that it's been released on a physical cartridge, and mm. it has a price on the price column. Yeah. If it's in normal text, it's just a download ROM, you know, if it's available. Yeah. And I hyperlink everything because, of course, you know, you and I, we, we use it all the time to go try to find some some title from Mav, and it's like, you know, we know know of a game to put on the show, and it's like, where where did I find it? So I always hyperlink everything. Yeah, and and I, that that brings me to my next point is that it's been an invaluable resource for me, for the show because I maybe hear of a game or I see a game somewhere. And, or I want to know what other games this this programmer has made, and I'd go straight to your list, and I can do a quick search, and I can, like you said, find those hyperlinks and find out more information. And going from that, actually, your books are also an invaluable resource because I've used them on the show a lot of times, and you go in depth into the game of who made it, the development process, um, even Easter eggs in the game. So maybe talk a little bit about your books as well. Okay. Um, yeah, the Mike Salzman started those uh, Atari, the un unauthorized Atari companions, and he was writing about the actual games that were released. And one of them, he had the arcade uh, companion, which was just arcade games ported to to the Atari. He did Volume One and Volume Two, and he was asking for people to submit a little story and also. You know, he put he put the story in your name in the back of the book, and so I submitted a couple and, and high scores. That was the other thing he was asking for, and I I get the book, I bought the book, and I'm like, hey, this is neat. I got my name in a book. Yeah. And so I, so after talking to him, he he explained to me how easy it is to write a book and get Amazon to publish it. And so I was like, well, once you're done in your series, because he was doing iMagic in network. Mm. Uh, Activision and so on. He was doing a book for every every company. I was like, well, when you get to the end, let me know. We could co-author a book for Homebrew since mm. I already was running the list. And uh, so I started one day out of the clear blue just writing. I had the template and started writing it and uh, sent it to him. And he was like, why is you know, my, Michael's name on it, and why was it co-authored? He was like, this is your book. You you run with it. Mm, and I was yep. like, okay. And one thing led to another. Got the first book published back in May with the uh, Halo 2600 on the cover. Right. And uh, the next one came out by July because I wanted to have two books uh, ready to go for the Houston Arcade Expo this past uh, October. And so I I kind of rushed volume two, but you know, I'm not I'm not a writer. That's for sure. I've never written a book. Uh, English in in high school was never my subject. Well, you're a writer uh, now. Never thought that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but with every title that I put in the book, I try to contact the programmer. Once I get their approval, I also send them proof pages. They read over it, give me suggestions. Um, you know, anything that I delete, um, uh, omit it out, any information that's incorrect, um, anything like that, I get approval. And 
actually volume the the first volume had a few old titles in there of course the programmers are no longer around on the internet and uh so there there's i think four titles in there i didn't actually get approvals for it. but volume two every single programmer uh approved every single one of those titles in volume two then of course as christmas comes around and i had issues with amazon so the the holiday homebrew book that came out on um, Kindle on Christmas Eve, and then the, the physical book came out in January 2nd. Yeah, so and just in time for Christmas, you snuck it in under the wire for a digital version of it. Yeah, yeah well, it was beyond my control. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so your list has also been invaluable for this award show, and also your your involvement in it, it we we had to go through so many titles and get so much information to compile like you have stats on this because you sent me a, a document on the stats for this award show maybe you can run through come with uh, a couple of those stats um okay like the total uh votes that were cast for our um, atari awards was 924 total votes uh, of course the top category was best homebrew yeah. got 119 best work in progress homebrew got 115 uh, both packaging and the technical achievement award and graphics all three of those categories got 101 votes each category mm -hmm. all the rest of them were um, in the 80 50s to 80 range yeah um, so, so Really good turnout for for the for the voting. Definitely enough to give a really good idea of which are the outstanding games for the year. And it was really great for the community to turn out and give opinions and and vote. It was it was really wonderful. Yes, uh, I I would like to thank everybody who uh, watching the show, everybody who participated in the voting, uh, all the programmers, the wonderful programmers out there. Um, the next book I'm working on is a 2000. Um, oh, say that again, you whole, cut out. Um, my next book is a 2018 best of homebrew games for nice. the whole year. Um, over 600 pages long. And uh, that whole book is dedicated to every programmer out there that's uh, that, that did a game throughout the whole year and also, you know, in the past. Uh, to make this this family community of uh, homebrewers so so great and I mean thriving so I mean I think it's bigger today than it ever was even in the mid 2000s. I think so too. It's really big and there's almost a new homebrew put out every single day. Like it's hard to keep up. I don't know how you uh, you must dedicate a lot of time each day to updating the list. But just just this year we've only had three days so far of this year that no update or no homebrew was announced or released anywhere on the internet. I'm only missing three days. Wow, that is amazing. So um, is there anything else you want to say before we let you go? No, I'd just like to thank uh, the whole uh, Zero Page Homebrew cast there, James, and, and uh, I'd, I'd like to also thank Albert from Atari Age uh, for helping me Get, get my idea of bringing back Stan, the Stan Awards to yeah. to uh, the internet and uh, thank everybody else for attending, watching, and participating. Yeah, and thank you for everything that you do, uh, Brian slash Arena Foot. And uh, somebody posted in the chat where they can find out more information about your list and your books. Homebrew2600.com, is that correct? Uh, unfortunately, that domain just expired yesterday. Oh, oh no! <laughs> so, oh no, buddy! If, so yes, th maybe uh, they can find you any, on uh, the Atari Age forums and under Arena Foot. Yeah, correct. And any of my posts uh, in my signature in the Atari Age forums, uh, I do have the links there to the. I have the spreadsheet on Yahoo, and I also have it on OneDrive for Microsoft. But uh, if anybody out there can help me try to port it over to a to a web page where it will actually display good, like like OneDrive, I, I'm, I prefer OneDrive. But if anybody out there can help me, you know, contact me, please. Excellent. 
Well, thank you so much um, for uh, being on the phone during, during this and doing everything that you do. Yeah, thank you so much, Arena. All right, thank you, everyone. Thank you, James. Thank you, and we'll talk with you later. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. There we go. Yeah, Arena Foot is so awesome. He's there, uh, like, every show. Oh, yeah. And he keeps track of scores. That's I was going to say, I, yeah. it, that's the, one of the best parts. And often when I get a terrible score, it's still up there, which I appreciate. <laughs> Not just putting down the good scores, but the bad scores, too, just to keep, yeah. uh, keep us, like, pushing. It's handy, especially when we're going for a high score. I can scrub through the video and, and see where I did that high score. And if I got one, I can chop it out and submit it to, you know, highscores.com or something. And there's also times that I've, like, <clears throat> like breezed through the screen just, like, being ADD. And he's actually <laughs> caught, like, the split second of, like, this thing in there or gone back and reviewed it. So yeah. he's always a trooper. Yeah, he's, he's been really awesome in there since pretty, pretty much day one oh, yeah. of the show. It's been great. So we're going to move on to the next award, oh. <clears throat> which is Technical Achievement Award. And this one is a little bit hard um, as well for people to understand, so I'm going to break it down what it is. Um, it's, it's a part of a game or a program or something done on the 2600 that really stands out uh, um, above everything else in the year. It can be like just a, uh, a simple programming tweak or an innovation Absolutely. that was done in a game that's never been seen before. Or maybe it's being done better in, in a game. And... So we found a, a list of really good ones. <clears throat> um, so we're going to run through the... Oh, my voice. <laughs> so we're going to run <laughs> through those right now um, so you can check them out. And some of them are a little bit um, difficult to understand if you're not a programmer. Um, but uh, these are all really, um, really good innovations. And you can probably get more details in the forms about why these were, um, were nominated um, for the uh, technical achievement. So let's take a look at the nominees for technical achievement. Technical Achievement Award. Aardvark by Thomas Jens. Alternating Playfield Priority Transparency Effect. Aardvark by Thomas Jens. 32 pixel traversing animated sprite. Gray Screen with No Music by Chopin. 16 byte maximum minimal demo. Hard 2632 by Imp and Spally. Mappy by Thomas Jens for code and Nathan Strum for graphics. 85 pixel multicolor title screen. Mappy by John Champeau. Player and enemy anti flicker code. Studio 2600 by Norbert Landsteiner. Okay, we are back. Oh, do you want to read it? Do you want me to read it? I'll read it if okay, you want. Okay, give me the award. Okay, there's the award. <laughs> so I get to read this. This is for Best Technical Achievement. And um, number three is Mappy by Thomas Yentz for the code, Nathan Strum for graphics, and 85 pixel multicolor title screen. Yes. Number two is Aardvark by Thomas Yentz, a 32 pixel sprite that smoothly enters 
traverses and exits the length of the color changing play field, both single lines, without using HMOVE blanks and W syncs or using extra sprite data. <laughs> That's like the I long explanation. Don't know if I know what much that meant, but <laughs> I know I'm some of those I'm words. I'm certain that lots of people do. <laughs> um, and for number one, for the winner, for the winner. <laughs> We have Mappy by John Shampoo, which is player to enemy anti flicker code. Ooh. Hooray! Which we had a whole like a, like an applause track. <laughs> <That's just> like, <laughs> there's the award. We're gonna get uh, John Shampoo back. There he is. Let's uh, get back on this way. Yeah. Back on our marks. Welcome back once again, John. Hello. Thank you very much. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh yeah, we'll get the audio up. Um, so this is for technical achievement. So maybe you can. Um, explain um, what that is in a little bit more detail, the alternating um, play field effect and, and what it looks like on the screen. What is this for? <laughs> oh, sorry. No, that's the wrong one. I need the sheet. No, you didn't make that game. Even though that is a very good technical First achievement. <laughs> this, is, um, this is for the player and enemy anti-flicker mm -hmm. code because in Mappy it has a lot of characters that can be on the same line. That is true. Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll go into a brief. First, I want to thank everyone for voting and for the support. Um, and also thank all the other nominees. Um, the stuff that they do is amazing and inspiring. Um, so certainly with, without, without that, you know, I probably wouldn't have been inspired to do Mappy at all. So um, as far as this specific award, um, the technical achievement is for the Flickr code. And um, as I had mentioned uh, in the... Uh, um, previous speech or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> um, the uh, I've been thinking about doing Mappy for a long time, um, back in 2001 or whatever it was. And uh, this big sticking point with Mappy is that there are you know 10 cats and there's like you have like 12 or 13 objects on a line. Um, yeah. So you know through the years there were various discussions on Atari Age and how that could be best handled. Um, even with the uh, um, advancements in the uh, um, hardware that's being used and um, all the uh, the drivers, um, the Atari is still you still have that restriction that you can only show two sprites on one line, um, with with some exceptions, of course. So, um, so once uh, with, with that being said, um, the anti flicker code or the um, code that was developed was really inspired by Daryl Spice. I gotta thank him first. Um, when I first got into the CDF programming, he introduced me to an algorithm he was using for one of his, his games, might have been Draconian, um, that I eventually used for Scramble. So um, using that as a basis um, and you know, changing it to suit the uh, um, demands of what Mappy was, um, I was able to present you know get the flicker down as much as much as possible um taking advantage of the fact that you know most most of the time out of those 12 sprites that can appear on one line nine of them are always going to be one of those pink cats the uh, meow meow so um by doing that and do some sprite copies and be able to merge sprites when they're jumping on the trampoline um and also a suggestion by uh, mike haas and, and tom yance as well to uh give an option to always have a 30 hertz uh, flicker um, so that way, when objects do flicker, it doesn't look as obvious. Um, we know all that, you know, just even though you have so many cats running around and there are times when there are 12, 13 things on the line, certainly it will flicker, but it's uh, um, it's to the point where the game is playable. And I'm, I'm glad we were able to get over that, that technical hurdle and bring Mappy to the 2600. So that's, that's a long story. Did, did you talk about Luma Boost as well? Um, that's right, Luma Boost. Is, I, do I have to say TM after that? I think I do, actually. I don't know. Did somebody TM it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Luma Boost, yes, exactly. Luma Boost, for those that don't know, is basically, I, I don't know if Tom came up with that or Daryl. That's something that's been around for a long time. Maybe even Cyber Goth. I'm going to really dig down into the, uh, the manual. It um, starts with an R. He did Gun, Gunfight, and Starfire, and a few others. Um, um, anyway, that's just an, a, a technique where they, where you, when a uh, sprite is going to be flickered, you just increase the luminance in that for one or two frames so that way it sticks around longer um, um, as on a crt um, so the flicker looks less it doesn't darken as much so it was that was that was instrumental that's something i actually used back in ladybug so that's something that carries over to uh, to, to uh, mappy as well so oh. yeah 
And a lot of these techniques you wouldn't have been able to make Ladybug or Mappy because there's so much going on on the screen. Yes, yeah. So, and when I've looked as, as well, we've gotten something like uh, CBS's Wizard of War or Pac Man, where they have, you know, they just they don't bother having any sort of code um, to manage Flickr. So, um, anyway, so that's that's the long and short of that. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Excellent. So, con so congratulations on um, your second win Wonderful. of the night thank or second win for Mappy. Yep. <laughs> thank you. I, mean, I appreciate it. So, and thanks to everyone. Yep. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Okay. So, um, it, uh, we're going to switch out again, switch out hosts. We're going to get, uh, Tanya to tag in here and we're going to move on to best music and sound. Um, and this is pretty self-explanatory. This one, come on in, come on in. You don't have to wait. You don't have to wait. He's not even on camera now. So this is uh, Tanya, my uh, lovely co-host, um, who hosts every second Friday. Every usually. second Friday. And Darcy trades off every second Friday as well. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not a, a very long um, trek to get on the show. No. And you do sub in um, when people are sick or yep. can't make it. Yeah. Oh, look. To the point that I'm somewhat disappointed That's when people actually too. show up. Yeah. Oh. This is this is just oh. something that oh, we'll happens. Pick there we go. Oh, and he's got he's got a little outfit on as well. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of not really. He on is camera. wearing oh, his tux. He's wearing his tux. He's always <laughs> wearing a tux. So yeah. Um, yeah. So this is Pixel. Yeah. And the other cat, or other cat, is Atari. Yeah. Come here. come here, baby. Come here. No, not right now. Maybe no. he'll come in. He's later. looking at clawing the furniture. Yeah, at the moment, they both so. like woke up though when you came over. They're like, oh, oh here. Yeah, yeah, it's so funny. Um, so we're gonna do best music and sound. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it's very self-explanatory. This is all the audio you hear in a game, um, from the beeps, the boops, to the voices in some games, to the music. Anything that's audible. Um, was up for um, possible nomination mm -hmm. in this category. Um, so we're going to um, go to the nominees right now. So these are the nominees for Best Music and Sound. Best Music and Sound. Apollyon by Fair Janice Zoltan. Asteroid Rescue by Ross Atkin. Beware by Fair Janice Zoltan. Fear of the Dark by Fair Janice Zoltan. Gizzlewap and the Terrible Blizzard of Fern by Jeff Smith. Mappy by Mike Haas and Daryl Spice Jr. Plague by Fair Janice Zoltan. Space Game by Carl Garrison and Maggie Vogel. Stripes of Terror by Christoph Klukzeg, Michael Zukowski, and Marius Gorski. Sword of Zerter by Jeff Sturmer.
this is for best music and sound. In third place, Stripes of Terror by Christoph Klukseg, Michael Zukowski, and Marius Gorski. Oh, actually, it's a tie for second place. That's not third. This is a tie for second place. Uh, it also in second place, Space Game by Carl Garrison, a.k.a. Carl G. and Maggie Vogel. And the winner is... Drumroll. Mappy by Mike Haas, a.k.a. I.E. Sposta, and also Daryl Spice Jr. And we have Mike on the line on Skype with us here. So let's move over. Mm -hmm. uh, there we go. There we go. Hello, Mike. How are you doing? Hi. Hi. I'm good. Oh, you're frozen. I'm just going to fix something very quickly. <laughs> One second. Uh, close up. <laughs> we don't want you frozen. <laughs> We're getting there. <laughs> go with just audio this we got the work. image in the background in a couple <laughs> seconds oh there we go Woo! hey Hello. there we go there we go Woo! so don't close that one i won't <laughs> just just for this time okay okay so welcome my congratulations thank um, you uh for your win uh with mappy on the sounds like that uh it has amazing sounds in mappy and all the music there's a lot of music in there Oh, can you hear us? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know how they fit all that music in there. It's a lot of data. And I had to uh, compose some of the things that I couldn't find on MIDI files. Yeah. So you, um, I know it was a conversion over from uh, the arcade um, title. So how did you um, convert the music over? What was the process? Originally, I had, I'd written it for the TIA chip just to see how awful it would be, and it came out pretty good. But I had always hoped to do it with the DPC three-channel music. Chip. Chip. And <laughs> Sorry, the cat is chewing on something. Um, yeah, it turned out really, really good. And there was a lot of music in Mappy, and uh, it's it's really wonderful. So great job on that. And uh, I know you supply a lot of music and a lot of sound for um, some game, a lot of the games that are coming out. Um, I, so I have to thank um, Bintar eight one six because his amazing sound effects in Pac-Man that just don't seem possible. He told me <laughs> the technique on how he did that. And basically it's building the sound frame by frame. And it's, it took me a long time to figure it out. It didn't work for a while. And when I got it, it works pretty good. <laughs> oh yeah. It's, it's amazing. It, it's, it sounds like it's digitized sound. Now, is it digitized sound or is it something else? Uh, the sound effects on the TIA channel are just what the Atari can handle. You just have to match each frame with that, that frame's sound. Mm. Well, it, it's it's like magic to me because I haven't really dived. I can understand graphics a little bit. You have, you know, the six components of graphics, but sound is a little bit this mysterious. This is last, last year's right award. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, the Draconian Award, yes. Yeah, that was a great 3D printed award. Because that was piece so, music from the TIA chip. And that's right. Sound effects. Yeah, that was that was a marvel in game speech. That was, that, was, that was amazing. That was really, really good on Draconian um, by Daryl Spice Jr. 
So, Eva, uh, do you have anything else to say before we let you go? Just back to Mappy. Um, most yep. of the tracks were MIDI files that I found. I uh, created the envelopes to make it sound more like the arcade tones. Mm. And John Champeau wrote a program to convert uh, three of the MIDI channels into the DPC format. Mm. And I, uh, like I said, I had to uh, compose <laughs> some of the things that weren't MIDI files. But, uh, yeah, so that, that saved Al, a lot of a lot of time. Thanks to yeah. your show, I have a lot of. Oh demoing. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's great um, demoing your your games and the the music that you've made on the show, and and you're you're uh, always in the chat, and it's it's really wonderful having you there. Thank you. Hopefully, 2019, I'll get a lot of products out. Oh, I'm sure you will. It, bye bye. Thanks. Thanks so much. And congratulations. Um, so that's, yeah, his, yes. he's a master at sound. Um, really, really wonderful. And hang up. There we go. <laughs> he could hang around for There's the rest a... of the show. Oh, that's fine. He'll, he'll get rid of that. Oh. <laughs> um, so uh, let's talk about so, uh, your history of 2600 mine? games. <laughs> You did play um, them back in the 80s? I, I, a I bit? Maybe a tiny bit. You're more I a think, Nintendo person. Well, I think we, we talked about this before. I My yeah. first real sort of console was a Commodore 64. That was what that we was had in my too. house. Yeah. And then... Uh, That's why I married her. It was purely based on our love uh, our for love Commodore of, 64. Yeah, Commodore 64 <laughs> and games. Um, <laughs> That's why I'm also really good friends with Darcy as yeah. well. It's the Commodore 64 thread. <laughs> <laughs> um... Uh, but uh, yeah, it would have been Commodore 64 for me, uh, which we got when I was quite young. And then yes. uh, following that, more the NES kind of classic console. Yeah, that, that was, was what I played era. the most of, I think, when I was young. But I did have friends. Uh, I do recall, you know, playing the odd game on the Atari 2600, okay. probably when I was quite young. Right. Um, yeah. So my real introduction to the 2600 has come through this show. Right, uh, because <laughs> introduced uh, I it to don't uh, Erlen as well through yeah, the show. Yeah. Well, I don't think I played it nearly as much as I have in the last year. So yeah. that has been a lot of a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to go back to these old systems and play the games, and especially if you don't, you know, I mean, they're homebrew games, but but just to reacquaint yourself with those yeah. those systems and how those games work. I so. mean, you'll play a blocky game downstairs in the twenty six hundred, and then come up and play Witcher three upstairs. Well, yeah, or Horizon Zero, <laughs> Horizon Dawn, Zero Dawn is Dawn. my current one, but so it's kind I of funny. like. Uh, but I, as as I think Erlen said before, it's a different feel of gameplay, and it's a lot more yeah. challenging. And uh, if you have, um, what I find with sort of the more old school games is uh, it's sort of the ambition to succeed at them that drives you forward. It's mm. not a game you just start playing and, um, uh, you know, like, like these big open world games where you're just, you're just kind of wandering through and, and your skill, once you've kind of mastered the controls, there's not necessarily a ton of skill needed to kind of progress with, with the more old school games like the Atari games and uh, even games I used to play on the Commodore 64. I mean, you have to build up your skill level to yes. actually uh, succeed at them. And, and I do. think uh, it, it makes them a lot of fun. It's a different experience. So, yeah. yeah. And, and a lot of these games, I don't think I would get the opportunity to play if it weren't for the show every, every second Friday. I <laughs> yes. run, run home from work and you're like, we've got five minutes, get five down minutes here. Five minutes till show time. <laughs> and Gotta I run go. down and, and, and get to play... Uh, games with you for a good couple of hours so i really and, enjoy it yeah. and to just go over um the history of the show it's yeah. now just been a year yeah. since we started the show and now we're doing like the awards for 2600 <laughs> i never thought it would come to this point that yeah you know i would hope but um it's really quite an honor to be able to host the award show for all the games that came out homebrews it's crazy but yeah we just finished a, a year i think we started in um early February, um, the uh, Zero Page Homebrew. And mm -hmm. we played so many games over the years. It was It's fun. And we went down to Portland Retro Gaming yeah, Expo. Yeah, that was a lot of fun too. Um, last yeah. October yeah. and interviewed John Champeau yeah. and Al Yaruso and um, also Dan Kitchen, whose interview is coming out soon-ish. We're just waiting for him to 
get some stuff together and maybe finish up his new games that are coming out soon. Um, yeah, it was really fun going down there and doing interviews with those people and streaming live yeah. while I played Warlords. Yeah. Live. <laughs> I that came in fun. third place, not yep. last. Yeah, third not place. last. <laughs> I, it, but uh, it was stiff competition. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's just been a really great and supportive community. Yeah. Um, that have really stuck with the show yep. for this 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 first year. Yeah, it's really nice to see, especially in the chat. You know, yes. the people come back Familiar to the show names and, and coming up and you know chat with us and interact with us as we're playing the games and yeah. And oh, we would constantly remind me of my less than ideal score. <laughs> but some games you're like I so, said puzzle, well, puzzle games. You we all have at. our strengths, and there's yeah. certain games that, that I'm platformers like. and shooters, and you're puzzle games. I like puzzle games. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely like puzzle games. And Arena Foot yeah. says we should go to the Houston Arcade Expo. I would love to go this year. Yeah, I, uh, I Houston love... is a place that we want to actually go to yeah. at some point. Well, I, I think Texas we want to visit. Texas in general. Austin and Houston. Austin. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. Um, so let's uh, move on to the next category, mm -hmm. which is best graphics, and another fairly self-explanatory category mm -hmm. as well. Everything you see visually, that what was uh, is up for best graphics. Um, and the Atari 2600 only has a limited number of things you can draw on the screen with. Um, there is the background, there, which is just black background, and you can do a line, line for line change. So you can make like sunsets like Activision has or tire tracks or a lot of those games. You saw Stripes of Terror had like a sunset. I think somebody pointed out, Corey, you were like, ooh, that's a nice sunset. <laughs> so that's used very well for a graduated um, there's Playfield, which is kind of blocky. It's 40 pix 40 chunks across, not pixels. Um, and you can change it each line. Um, so that's two. And then you've got the ball, which just bounces around. And you can change that wide as well, which is the same color as the Playfield. So you have to be careful with that. And then you've got Player Zero and Missile Zero. So that's your one sprite per line that you can make a guy out of or enemy. And the missile, which is just a wide thing. And then you've got player one and missile one. So that's, did I count them wrong? And anyway, six or seven or eight. I miscounted. <laughs> um, so that's all you have, but you can change them line for line. A different color, a different graphic, if you have time. Because it's all done in real time, and that's really why I love the Atari 2600. It is very unique. You don't pre-draw the screen and then go bleh. You draw the screen as it's drawing the screen. You change the colors, you change the graphics line for line, or even midline, um, say for the play field. It's really, really amazing. Um, so let's get to the nominees for the best graphics. And here they are. Best graphics. Best graphics. Apollyon by Fair Janice Zoltan. Balloon Trip by Blue Swimmer. Dungeon 2 Solstice by David Weevil. Fear of the Dark by Fair Janice Zoltan. Gizzlewap and the Terrible Blizzard of Fern by Jeff Smith. Mappy by John Shampo and Nathan Strum. Plague by Fair Janice Zoltan. Sheep It Up 
by Dr. Ludos. Space Game by Carl Garrison and Maggie Vogel. Stripes of Terror by Krzysztof Klukseg and Michael Zukowski and Marius Gorski. Sword of Surter by Jeff Sturmer. Tron by Orange 808. Tire Tracks by Lewis Hill. Is going to read off Woo. the um, winners yes. for best graphics. For best graphics. Okay, so drum roll. So, starting with third place, we have Dungeon 2 Solstice by David Weevil, aka uh, C0C7. I'm saying S0C7. S0, sorry, yeah. S0C7. Uh, in second place, Tire Tracks. Uh, BB by Lewis Hill, a.k.a. Muddy Funster. And coming in in first place, we have Mappy by John W. Champo, a.k.a. Johnny W.C. of Champ Games and Nathan Strum. So Nathan Strum will be accepting the award via written speech again. So here you go. I'll go All grab right. that. There you go, Nathan. <clears throat> Nathan Strum, best graphic. Uh, thank you to everyone who voted for Mappy. This is, uh, was really fun project to work on and I started out not even really liking Mappy. But as I worked on it, it really grew on me and became one of my favorites. I'm continually amazed by what programmers are able to squeeze out of the 2600. And the work that John did on Mappy is yet another high wa uh, watermark for homebrews. I'm privileged, privileged to have been part of this project and getting to work on homebrews in general is a dream come true. As a non-programmer, it's really exciting to watch graphics I create to be brought to life on real hardware. It's even better when I know other people really enjoy playing the games too. Thanks, of course, go to John Champo for asking me to work on Mappy, as well as Bob Montgomery, Chris Walton, Daryl Spice Jr., Thomas Yentz, and many other programmers that I've been able to work with. Special thanks goes to Mike Haas for his incredible, it is an early mock-up work that inspired some of the graphics in Mappy and of course for his incredible audio in the game. Finally, of course, thanks to James, <laughs> Brian and Albert for putting together the Atari Awards, for their unwavering support of the hobby and to the whole Zero Page crew. That's everyone, yay! yay! <laughs> <laughs> for continuing to showcase games from across the entire 2600 homebrew scene. And that includes the cats too. Aww. I'll take this and you can show off the cat. Yeah, we have- he so says, Thanks, he's, cats. He's finally woken up. So. Yeah, and he's got on a little bow tie. <laughs> he does. He's oh, gonna... that's very cute. Yeah. <laughs> this is Atari. He this made an appearance. Atari. There is a close-up of Atari. How oh, are you doing? Buddy. How are you doing today? He's got his beautiful little polka dot bow tie on. Yeah. Um, so congratulations, Nathan Strum for graphics. Obviously, the mappy graphics are outstanding. They're really, really detailed graphics. So those. Love playing. Just I think just like you, um, at first I was like, Mappy, I don't understand. What is going on here? And then I really got into it after a while because I'd never played it in the arcade before. I don't know if anybody here. Um, I, I was... Had you oh, played... No, it's one of my favorite games. <laughs> is this one of your favorite games, Corey? Been, yeah. Let's go to Corey. <laughs> oh, you're not switched on to you. 
Oh, I'm not switched there on you go. me. Maybe that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. you you played it in? Did you play it in the arcade? Yeah, I used to play it at Huggy Bear's Pizza Palace. Whatever <laughs> 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 game I'd play, every time I'd be like, "Pizza's ordered, sweet, I'll be over here." Wow, <laughs> wow, wow, that's awesome. Okay, there's enough curry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so congratulations, Nathan Strum, for that. Um, so let's go to the second to last award of the show. Mm-hmm. And it is Best Batari Basic Homebrew. Um, there are basically, no pun intended, two uh, programming environments that are um, popular right now for making homebrew games. One of them is assembly code, which is literally sending the exact code right to the Atari 2600 telling it what to do. It's like, I want this number in this spot. I want to add these two numbers together. Um, it is bare bones. You're telling the, oh, you're still here. It's so cute. <laughs> he doesn't usually sit so still. No. <laughs> um, and the other one, which is this award, this is for Batari Basic. And this is um, a higher level programming language where there's built in functions that make it a little bit easier for the programmers um so they don't have to do the grunt work each time they can say oh i want this person in this place i'm paraphrasing because i've actually not used batari basic but um yeah there's built-in routines that you can load in and access and you just send information to those and it'll do it so it it saves time and it's also easy to get into if you're uh, a new programmer so this is what this uh, award is for is for specifically Games made in Batari Basic, and here are the nominees. Best Batari Basic Homebrew. Homebrew. Apollyon by Ferrer Janus Zoltan. Gizzlewap and the Terrible Blizzard of Fern by Jeff Smith. Horizon Shift by Paul Marable. Monkey King by Alex Petro. Plague by Fair Janice Zoltan. Sheep It Up by Dr. Ludos. Space Game by Carl Garrison and Maggie Vogel. Stardust by Brian Wayne Shea. Sword of Surter by Jeff Sturmer. Tire Tracks by Lewis Hill. Atari Basic Homebrew. This, uh, the third place is Sword of Surter by Jeff Sturmer, aka Ultima. In second place, Tire Tracks by Lewis Hill, aka Muddy Funster. 
And the winner of Best Batari Basic Homebrew is Space Game by Carl Garrison, a.k.a. Carl G. and Maggie Vogel. Congratulations. So we have Carl on the line with us. So welcome, Carl. Congratulations. Let's move over so I'm not in front of your face. Yeah. <laughs> We can hear you. Can you hear us? Yes. Yes. Excellent. So congratulations on, on the win for Best Batari Basic. Thank you. Thank you. This was actually my, was actually my first project, first project uh, to learn Batari Basic. And wow. I started in 2017. I wanted to just produce something small that um, I could get done in time for the 40th anniversary of the Atari but it kind of yep. grew bigger and took longer than expected, but it's been fun and a great process. I'd like to thank Maggie as my co-creator. She, she did all the music, a lot of the sound, most of the graphics and the manual. Um, my family uh, for testing and encouragement. Um, Mike Sarna, uh, AKA Revenge on the forums uh, for technical assistance as I was learning and also the code behind the title screen and the Atari Vox driver and Albert for uh, publishing the game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, are you frozen? Nope, you're good. Yeah, I really love um, uh, Space Game because I really like shooters and um, I think my favorite part is when you get the two ships and then you can unleash upon them and of course all the power-ups because um power-ups are uh, a really fun thing of any game i enjoyed doing the power-ups uh, but i as a programmer for some reason i got sadistic pleasure in coming up with the power downs even more than the good ones <laughs> <laughs> yep the, what are they the wide ship uh there's backwards controls oh my yeah, god that, that one terrible. maggie came up with uh, the backwards controls is, is sadistic slow is a killer for sure and then bad cannons. Yes. Yeah. So it's a really, those things really add to the game. It, it makes such amazing variety um, f for gameplay. Um, yeah, really great job. Right. And especially for your first game. Oh my God, that's amazing. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So congratulations, and we will ship out this beautiful award They're to you. They're gorgeous awards. <laughs> Yay. So we'll, we'll be in touch with you to get your address. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Congratulations. Yeah, congrats. Bye. <laughs> okay, so now what do we have left? Oh, what is left? It is best homebrew. Woo! And this is the overall best. Oh, a little squeak from him. So everybody come on in. Let's try and squeeze in. Uh, Darcy, you go. In the back. Side. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Um, oh, so we're going to br oh. bring all the people in for this one. Um, <laughs> you don't have to squeeze in that close. Look Sorry, there, there, we go. there we go. Oh, is this where we all do uh, funny ears? Yes. Um, <laughs> so this is, uh, the, the category for this is best homebrew. So this is best overall, at all these things that we were talking about before, graphics, sound, programming, um just everything adding up to one thing overall best gameplay everything together um so that's it's it's a challenge it's like best picture at the oscars yeah. <laughs> um it's it's the cumulative of everything harmonizing together making a fun experience but also being nice looking and great sound and everything like that uh, one cat is missing. Well, the other cat's on the floor. Yeah, dude. Oh, it's, it's full. It's... <laughs> there we go. Good luck I with don't it. want to put him on my outfit. <laughs> no. There he is. No. This is Pixel. Oh, yep. This is Atari. Yeah, so I'm going to put him down. <laughs> I don't want to mess up my suit with cat hair. Uh, drum roll, Arena <laughs> Foot says. Me. Yeah, too, too late. late. <laughs> uh, get the envelopes. Yes. Well, we're going to show the nominees first. Yes. So, the nominees. For best homebrew for 2018 Atari Awards are best homebrew. Not that one. Trip by Blue Swimmer.
Birds and Beans by Blue Swimmer. Dungeon 2 Solstice by David Weevil. Mappy by John Shampoo. Plague by Fairer Janus Zoltan. Refraction by Norbert Landsteiner. Sheep It Up by Dr. Ludos. Stripes of Terror by Christoph Klukes, Michael Zukowski, and Marius Gorski. Sword of Surter by Jeff Sturmer. Tire Tracks by Lewis Hill. Oh. And welcome back. And we gave away. <laughs> um, in... Oh, crap. <laughs> it's, it's Corey's fault. Um, in third place, Dungeon 2 Solstice by David Weevil. Uh, in second place, Sword of Surter by Jeff Sturmer, a.k.a. Ultima. Yeah, Nathan Strom says, spoiler! Uh, and the winner is... Uh, Mappy by John Champeau, uh, a.k.a. Johnny WC of Champ Games. And welcome back and thanks for hanging on. You, I know you needed to go out to something. <laughs> oh, go to desktop audio. Desktop. One oh. second, one second, John. Okay, there now now you can say. Sorry, go ahead. Okay, that's fine. Well, first, thank you very much for this award. Um, um, of course, I have a whole. I actually wrote a speech out this so That way, I don't forget uh -huh. to thank you. So, um, first, thanks to you guys for putting on the show. It was amazing. Um, it's really. A great place to come and hang around with people that have the same passions as you. So, um, um, thank you to you and all of your your whole ZPH crew. Um, it's certainly much appreciated. Um, everything that you do for us. So, um, I'm sure everyone else on, on the line feels the same way. So, first, we'll say thanks for that. Um, as far as Mappy's concerned, you know, certainly um, as you described when you were talking about the best homebrew, you said that you know this award is really for not only you know, best game but it's also for you know it's a combination of best graphics sounds gameplay um everything that's involved in making these games um so for that you know i'd like to thank uh you know nathan strum um uh, as some people may know he's been kind of like my right hand man for almost all my programs um games that i've made starting way back with ladybug so nathan this is my chance to actually say thank you to you, you know, for everything that you've done to inspire me to to start these projects and bring them to their um, ending and, and bring them out. So thanks to you. Um, and also for, um, I would like to thank uh, Mike Haas, of course, um, for his amazing work on the music. Um, as we all know, or people who have played Mappy, the music is an integral part of the game. Um, and Mike had put a TIA demo together at some point, um, showing the capabilities of how he thought the uh, sounds and the music we play for Mappy. 
um, that inspired me to actually start um, start this game and bring it to um, finish it. So, Mike, thank you, and uh, thanks for all your hard work. You certainly much appreciate it. Um, of course, um, I'd also like to thank uh, Daryl Spice. Um, he uh, got me turned on to this CDF programming, which really made it possible to even make this game um, as, as, as good as it came out. So um, thanks to Daryl and also his, uh, his work um, with the music driver in the game. Um, so we could take uh, Mike's vision of, of what he wanted those sounds to be like and put them into the game. I'd um, also like to thank uh, Tom Jens. Um, Tom and I, we've... Uh, worked together on many of my projects over the years. And for Mappy, uh, he spent a lot of time helping uh, helping me free up some space um, so we could squeeze in a lot of the uh, extra bells and whistles. So um, thanks to Tom for that final push at the end to really uh, push this game o over the top. And uh, um, hopefully people appreciate all the stuff that he does for the community. And so I know I certainly do. Um, I do want to give a shout out to Steve Ramirez. Um, He's a guy on um, Atari Age that um, he does a lot of my game testing for me. Um, he's very good at what he does as far as game testing is concerned. Um, he's much better at Mappy than I will probably ever be. So he uh, he was able to give me some really good feedback as to how the game will play at higher levels. Um, and so Steve just wanted to say thanks to you for that. Um, and I know this was mentioned before um, when people when, um, when Al was on the phone. Um, Al, thank you for all that you do. Um, um, certainly making these games and just come up with the ideas is half the battle, as we know. Um, making uh, these games available to the community with you know, work that you do for Atari Age and website, um, that's what inspired me to start doing this um, in, in the first place. So. Um, I know you spend a lot of, a lot of your time and effort um, with the packaging and putting things together and shipping and maintaining the website. Um, for all that, I'm very appreciative. Thank you very much. Um, so, and lastly, I guess I would want to thank the Atari community um, because you guys are why I make these games. So, you know, it's fun for me to live out my childhood fantasy of being a... Uh, Atari programmer, but if there's no one to play these games, it'd, it'd be pretty boring, to be honest with you. So um, nothing is better than having and hearing that feedback from, from you guys, how much you enjoy the games, and it inspires me to uh, to uh, do more. So hopefully uh, um, I can uh, continue to reach that, that level for you guys for, for next for next year and years to come. So um, I said lastly, but um, I would want to take the time out to say thanks to my family, uh, my girlfriend specifically, Maureen. Um, I did take about eight or nine years off from development, um, making Atari games, and when I met her and she came to my life, she's been very inspirational in putting me back into this uh, this realm of what I really love to do. Her uh, support really, um, really means a lot to me. So without her, probably wouldn't be seeing these Mappy or, or any other games for me. So, I just want to say thanks to her as well. So, and that's it. So, uh, looking forward to next year and uh, all the great games that are coming out. And thanks again to everyone. So, thank you. Thanks, John. Great. Well said. <laughs> I think you covered a bit just about everything. Oh, switching back. Oh, <laughs> um, and um, yeah, thank you for um, hanging on. I know you have to. Oh, he's gone. Never mind. <laughs> I'm going to transition back. Oh, wow. Okay, well, thank you to absolutely everyone who uh, who won and made all these amazing games are for nomination or weren't even in nominate weren't nominated. There's so many amazing games in 2018, and congratulations to all the ten winners. Um, I'm also printing a, a certificate saying your name on them that I'll be sending out to you with the beautiful and awards. with the beautiful yeah. award, and I'll send this out to you as well with the. And also, um, I think there's also a graphic. Somebody brought it up in the chat. There are um, little graphics you can put on web pages or whatever. And I'll send that out as well. So you have that to put a really high resolution one to put on your website or just post it anywhere you want or ignore it. <laughs> um, and um, I think that's, that's it. Um, so thanks everybody for tuning in to the 2018 Atari Awards. 
Uh, it went fairly smoothly. I think. <laughs> <laughs> a little rocky at the beginning, but uh, for the most part, never doing something as big as this on a live stream with a green screen and two cameras and phoning in uh, to two different programs and and, and trying and, to and remotely control other people well. uh, yep. yeah. with voice control. Yeah. yeah. Oh, press that button. This button. Yeah. Yeah. Up and down. Left and right. It, it was. It was an, a, a huge undertaking. Um, and it's amazing that we have the technology to do this, and people are watching. Um, and we um, were. We will be back in mid March because I need to lay down and <laughs> I'm totally exhausted from yeah. uh, putting this awards to get a show together. Um, and I want to th thank big thanks to Brian Mathern and also Albert Yeruso for um, doing their parts in this as well. It was a massive undertaking to organize all this and contact all these people. Um, we contacted every single um, uh, nominee to tell them that they were in the race and we contact all the winners. And it was just a lot of organization that we all had to do. And Albert had to modify the, the forums to support this type of secret voting so that because forums don't do this. Like it's not a normal thing to have secret votes. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. that had to be done uh, a manual... Uh, coding on the forum so everybody put in a ton of work for this and I want to thank all my co-hosts here right. for the year great year of Zero Page Hover <laughs> and of course Corey uh, who stepped in you can't see right now who stepped in to help out um, on the uh, mixing board the video and audio mixing board he did a great job for never using this program ever, ever before yeah. 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 that's the top award spoiler a couple spoilers <laughs> yeah. but, you know it only came a couple a uh, couple seconds early that's yeah. okay Spo yeah. spoilers are okay <laughs> and of course uh, thank you to everybody who uh, tuned in over this year and tuned in uh, today to watch the awards and I want to say Welcome to the new people mm -hmm. who have never watched this show before, because I'm sure there's a couple new people that tuned in just to see this awards. And normally we play home, homebrew games. Yeah, we're play, the game. This is the only <laughs> yeah. show we've ever done where we've never played one game before. Yeah. One game. So normally we play uh, games on Wednesdays and Fridays with these guys right here. Mm -hmm. um, so you can tune in. We'll be back mid-March on this same exact channel. So click all the buttons at the top. Subscribe, bells, likes. All those all things, the things. Yes. so that you can be alerted. And we have Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all of it. Um, so um, thank you very much to everybody. And uh, oh, Laid 41. I am new people. Yes, there are new people. <laughs> and uh, we will see you mid-March. And we have like 80 shows that you can watch on YouTube in the archives if uh, you can't wait around to see a bit more of us. Um, so thank you so much. And we'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.